Assalamu alaikum. And welcome to another episode of Smile to Jannah. This is for the child that is searching for the Nasa. Wish that we take your tears and replace them with laughter. Learn it for us, Love it, before we begin the video, Ali Dawa is raising some funds to help with his studio because you can see flipping holes in the roof, damp everywhere. So let's support the brother. Link in the description. Let's jump into it. Yeah! Now I know what you guys are thinking. Is this clickbait? Is this a serious question? And I posit to the house that it is. And I shall be presenting my evidence of why poo is an adequate replacement for the current mainstream media. Are you okay? Well, if you look at the mainstream media that we have at this moment in time, it spreads lies. That's what it does, packaged in truth, backed by the government. And they've got the nerve to tell us to our faces that, yo, we are in the middle, we're nuanced, but in reality, what they're giving us is poo. So my argument is, why don't we just have the poo? Yeah? Why do we need the media disguised as poo? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Woo! Ah. Yes. Yeah. And another thing, it spreads lies and it kowtows and pushes the agenda of the rich and the powerful. Yeah, but what about the poo? Yeah, get to the poo. We're here for the poo, mate. All right, poo helps everyone when it's used as fertilizer. That's right, it doesn't discriminate between minorities and majorities. It doesn't spread lies. The only thing it spreads is smell. Exactly. I had a girlfriend. Low it, low it. I'm philosophizing you. Yeah? And let's face it, smell is not going to kill anyone. Smell is not going to heighten fear and cause wars and justify illegal wars. Now what promoted me to ask such a deep and philosophical question? Yeah, now I know what you're thinking, like, he's so smart, yeah? He's so handsome, like how is he still single? You know what I'm saying? All right, let me, let me tell you this, yeah? Consider the following. When an old man gets attacked, do we say he clashed with the thug's fists? When a person gets gunned down, do we say that he clashed with the gun? When a child gets mowed down by a drunk driver, do we say that he clashed with the car? Of course not. Is that even a question I hear you ask? Well, I didn't think it was a question until I saw how the media is covering the oppression of the Palestinians these last couple of days. As I'm sure a lot of you have heard by now, a lot's been going on in Palestine the last couple of days. It started off in a place called Sheikh Jarrah. That's a place which ironically was named after the physician of Salahuddin al Ayyubi, yeah, the Muslim leader who after liberating Quds, Jerusalem, brought back the Jews who were exiled by the Crusaders and now we're seeing this. <laughs> yeah. Muslims being forcibly evicted from their homes. You are stealing my house. And if I don't steal it, someone else is gonna steal it. And that then led to peaceful protests. Yes, that's right. People not leaving the mosque, doing their prayers and then <laughs> The soldiers coming in with stun and sound grenades, with tear gas, rubber bullets. It's ridiculous, yeah? This is a place of worship in the middle of Ramadan. And then this is what these individuals are doing. Look at this poor defenseless old man. He's clearly a threat, isn't he? Now on the one hand, you have the army. Yeah, fully laden, yeah, with armor and weapons and you name it, against civilians with empty bottles in their hands. And the media is still intent on saying yes, treating them both as equals. I'm sorry, mate, they are not equals. Yeah, if you think they're equals, mate, I think you need these more than me, mate. And you know why the media is intent on making them seem like equals? Because Israel is just constantly taking the mick. And if the Western public came to know the reality of what's going on there, mate, you would honestly get people saying, what the hell is wrong with Israel? Or crossbreeding clearly works. 
because these people are animals. And it being called a democracy and an ally of the UK and then receiving hundreds of thousands of pounds on a daily basis by the US. And let's be frank, if these soldiers were Muslims and this was a Muslim country that was doing such actions to a synagogue or to a church or nay, if these protests were happening in a country that was an ally of the UK. Yeah, like for example, the UK loves talking about the Hong Kong protests because it's against China. Yeah, then it would be all over the media. Yeah, there would be discussions everywhere, front page news. Reform the religion, change the why are Muslims like this. Tommy Robinson and his cronies would be out on the streets and the likes. And one thing I think is worth saying is that the media loves bashing us over the head with activism that it has decided needs to be put across like LGBT, feminism, yeah, the things that go uh, in accordance with their agenda and what they want to push. And okay, that's fine, let's play your little game, yeah? Here you can see child brutality taking place, yes, a child running from a stun grenade, yeah? Now imagine the trauma and the PTSD that this child is going through. Anytime he hears the rattling of a tin can, yeah? Where are the uh, human rights and the chi children's rights organization? Silence, yeah? Oh, we don't speak now. Or what about the feminists and the women's right activists? Seeing this woman being literally pulled by her hair, she's not resisting arrest. She's not doing anything, she's just peacefully protesting. Where are these women? Apparently we're oppressive. So you help us then, help us here. Where are all the women activists? Zip, nothing, not even a single tweet. And you know what? Everybody loves talking about animals rights. Yeah, animals rights. Okay, if you don't care about the Palestinians, what about the cats? Yeah, the cats that are in the Aqsa compound. What, do you think everything's going to be cool with the cats? Come on animal rights, let's do something. Come on, come on, come on. Only when it suits your agenda, you put those things across and then you batter us over the head with. When Allah with you brother, brother nobody can go. I know some of you are thinking, what do we do? It really hurts and you can't do anything and it's hopeless. Look, look, look. Realize that this religion, yeah, it will prevail with or without us. We do what we can, what is in our power. The outcome is in the hands of Allah, the control of Allah. So we do whatever we can, be it du'as, yeah, be it educating ourselves, educating our family, our friends, going to marches, making people aware of it, whatever capacity. Some of you are in a greater influence uh, position than others, of course, then your duty is higher. Uh, if you cannot do much, then you do whatever is in your control. Yeah, don't worry about the outcome. I know it's sad. I know it's hurtful. Yeah, but realize Allah is watching. Allah is watching. So you do what you can and inshallah Allah will take care of it. Don't you worry, don't you worry. Be like our Palestinians brothers and sisters that you can see from different parts of the country. They are coming by their cars, Israelis are stopping their cars, but they are getting out of their cars and they are coming in their droves to support their brothers and sisters. This, this is what Islam teaches us, to be resilient. This is where we get our strength and our energy from, from our salah, from our connection with Allah. And that's why you see in the masjid compound, look at this, a day later after being brutalized, yeah, and even after this we were brutalized again, but yet you see how resilient we are. That's right, this is the tradition we come from, 313 against an army of a thousand. Yeah, the first, the first battle of the Prophet ﷺ, the battle of Badr, search it up, search it up and then you will know why the Muslims are not afraid. Yes, we're not afraid, yeah, realize this. Let's leave it there guys, until next time, Assalamu Alaikum.